What's going on, everyone? Hello, and welcome to another episode of Brain Gains. My name is Tyler, and it's great to have you here. Uh, as you can see, we are still in my office upstairs. I know we normally like to film at our headquarters at BBCom, but we just haven't all gotten back into the office yet. I think we're going to try and push for uh, next month, I think. The plan is kind of tentative right now. We're trying to get everyone's schedules put together. But for now, you're stuck in my office. You're stuck with all the weird gaming posters behind, and you're stuck with just me on a camera. So thank you all for being here. It's, it's, it's great to have people uh, still looking to tune in, still looking to learn a little bit about nutrition and supplements and exercise. So if you have questions, today we are talking about uh, amino acids, so branch chain amino acids, uh, the essential amino acids, and then hydration. And we'll, we'll kind of segue from one into the other. So if you have questions about those two categories, please feel free to throw those into chat and we'll get to those today. And if we have some extra time, we'll talk about some other stuff too. So again, for those who don't know, my name is Tyler McGlasson. Uh, I work in the regulatory compliance department at bodybuilding.com. Uh, that means that it's my job to make sure that BBCom uh, uh, stays in line with all the federal regulations from the FDA and the FTC and make sure that we're not telling our customers anything that isn't true about our products. I make sure that all the science behind our, our products is correct. So it's my job to make sure that I'm studying all the clinical evidence that's available for our products and then all the regulations that are constantly changing. So if you have questions about that, please feel free to ask uh, questions there as well because people don't generally ask about regulatory compliance. So that's kind of fun to talk about too. Uh, but anyway, like I said, uh, today we are talking about amino acids and we're gonna start with branch chain amino acids. So this is a huge category within not just our website, but just kind of exercise and nutrition in general. People love consuming their branched chain amino acids and that's great. Uh, so the three branched chain amino acids are leucine, isoleucine and valine. I'm sure a lot of people are very familiar with those names uh, and also very familiar with leucine specifically. So we know that leucine is kind of the main driver of what's called the mTOR system or the mammalian target of rapamycin, which is the chemical name for the pathway that activates the building of muscle. And leucine is one of the real main drivers for starting that system. And so it's really common for us to see when people are talking about branching amino acid products that like, if you consume this, you will get leucine and leucine is great for muscle building. So it's a little bit more complicated than that. And we're gonna talk about them in a little bit more of an abstract turn than that. But anyway, it's important that you just know that leucine is really important for how your body activates the, the chemical reactions necessary to build muscle. Now, normally when, when people are talking about them, I, I get the questions, when's the right time or, or when should I be uh, consuming amino acids? How much should I be consuming? And so I like to uh, uh, use branched chain amino acids as like a gap filler. Uh, kind of like how you would use a multivitamin to fill in gaps in your nutrition for micronutrients. Branched chain amino acids are kind of a gap filler for amino acids that you may not be getting in your diet otherwise. So leucine specifically, we want to make sure that everyone is consuming leucine in relatively large amounts throughout the course of a day. Now I know the ISSN position stand on protein intake and amino acids recommends that you're getting three grams of leucine. Sorry. Yeah, three grams of leucine for every serving of protein. I know that seems like a lot, but it's just, it's super important. And this is specifically important for people who are on plant-based diets. Uh, leucine's really common in animal meat. Uh, if, you're, if you're eating steak or chicken or pork or whatever, you're getting a lot of, you're getting a lot of uh, leucine. This is especially true in whey protein that you get plenty of leucine with every serving. But plant protein is a little bit harder to find leucine in. I'm not sure why nature decided that it was gonna have this really important amino acid not be super common in plants, but it's, but it's not. So if you're on a plant-based diet, make sure you're tracking how much leucine that you're getting. And if you're not getting enough, a branched chain amino acid supplement might not be a bad idea for you. Uh, are amino acids important for bulking? Yavert from YouTube asks. Uh, overall, yes. I mean, having a branched chain amino acid supplement is not going to by itself increase your muscle size. Your muscle size is significantly more dependent on your total calorie intake, your total protein intake, and then how much work you're doing in the gym. Your muscles respond and adapt to the work that they're uh, put up to. And so if you're working really hard in the gym, they're going to grow as a function of that. But if you're not exercising hard, or if you're exercising on a plan that is more focused on like endurance exercise, for example, like high volume, your muscles aren't going to need to grow as a function of that. So you want to do exercise uh, that's going to make them want to grow and then give them the calories that will allow them to do that. Amino acids are an important piece of that puzzle, but they are not the only answer. 
Uh, how does protein help with muscle growth? So, uh, bestest, bestest cat. Uh, this is a this is a good question. So, how does protein help muscles grow? So, protein and and the amino acids that it is made of are the building blocks of which your muscle is made. So when you exercise and you work out, we're gonna assume that you are exercising for muscle growth. So you're, you're lifting weights, you're lifting heavy, you're lifting hard and you're lifting often. Lifting causes damage to your muscles. It causes little micro tears, little breaks. It causes stress to that tissue. And in response to that stress, your body builds that muscle back stronger. And this is a, this is in a way kind of a defense mechanism, right? You think about this from the perspective of your body, uh, I'm going under this stress and I wanna make sure that I'm more prepared for that stress the next time that it comes. And so I'm gonna build that muscle back stronger than it was before. And so if you are constantly uh, putting your body up against a greater and greater stress, it's going to constantly build that muscle back stronger and bigger than it was before. Now there's lots of information and lots of variance when it comes to how quickly that process happens, uh, but the general uh, how and why is your protein is the protein that you consume is what your body uses to build that muscle back after you break it down from exercising uh, Okay, one more and then actually, you know, let's let's keep going. What's my favorite flavor of aminos Robert? This is a really good question. I'm a really big fan of mixing berries and citrus so blueberry lemonade or or blackberry limeade or any of those if you mix berries and citrus That's my favorite hundred percent uh, is it necessary to take amino acids while cutting and fasting? It's not necessary, but it might help. So that is another benefit of having branched chain amino acids. One thing that a lot of people don't take into account when they're cutting. And you know, when we say cutting, that means that we're decreasing our, cal our caloric load for the day while we're continuing to exercise. So we're not giving our body the amount of food that it needs to build back. Thus, it needs to pull from its own stores to uh, make energy and hopefully all those stores are fat stores but unfortunately when your body needs to make energy it does so with uh, a, a degree or with a wide net we'll say and that means that if it needs to make energy and you're not giving it the food to make energy sometimes it'll pull from the amino acid stores to make energy now another great name for your amino acid stores is your muscle. So if you are not intaking enough calories to keep up with your energy demands, there is a time when your body will pull from your muscle. It'll actually break down muscle in order to meet those energy demands. So what we have found is that consumption of branched chain amino acids can give your body some of those amino acids to break down without it having to pull from your muscles to get them. So not all of the amino acids that, that make up your muscle lead to energy or lead to uh, the creation of sugars that can be broken down for uh, energy. So this means they're called non-glucogenic, but most of them are. So leucine and lysine are non-glucogenic, but most of them are. So most of them can be broken down for energy. So consuming branched chain amino acids has the potentiality to help protect you a bit from some of the muscle wasting that could take place as a function of decreased caloric intake. Uh, okay. Let's see, what do amino acids do? Uh, Rymans, I feel like we have done a good job talking about that already, uh, but basically they're the building blocks on which your muscles are made. Uh, any tips for recovering all the muscle mass lost during lockdown? All right, so obviously people have not been able to go to the gym to the degree that they have wanted to as a part of this pandemic lockdown. It sucks, it's a reality, but it's one that we're all dealing with. But there are things that you can be doing that can help either A, continue to build muscle or B, just kind of maintain the amount of muscle that you've had before. Uh, there are a lot of plans out there, hint, hint, body fit, hint, hint, that have, have really great tips and really great structure for how to uh, uh, make for wonderful exercise programs without ever using any weights. They're all body weight or they're home focused that have very little equipment. Uh, there are a lot of things that you can be doing at home to make sure that your muscles stay in shape, right? Even things as simple as push-ups and sit-ups and squats and lunges and going for runs, like there are a lot of things that you can do in the comfort of your own home that will give your body the stress that it needs to maintain the muscle mass that you have. Now, I'm not saying that you can uh, go around and, and find a way to pile 300 pounds onto a bench press bar and continue to work out those sweet chest gains, but there are things that you can do to help maintain. For those that are really at the top level of muscle growth and are lifting really heavy, kind of in that top two or 3% of people that 
uh, are, are really taking advantage of the gym. It, it is true that you won't be able to achieve a lot of that at home unless you have a, a reasonably expensive home workout system. So I, I feel for you there. But when it comes to the everyman, when it comes to people who generally work out a few times a week to maintain health or to maintain strength, there are a lot of ways uh, and a lot of exercise programs uh, on BodyFit, wink, uh, that you can uh, check out and follow and make sure that you are maintaining the health that you're trying to maintain. Uh, is EAA more efficient and better than BCAA, says Gin Tonic YouTube. That is a perfect segue. So we get this all the time. Should I be taking BCAAs? Should I be taking EAAs? What's the difference? When is best to take what? Here we go. BCAAs are an essential amino acid. An essential amino acid is a category of amino acids. It is nine of the 20 structural amino acids that your body cannot make by itself. 11 out of the 20, your body can create inside. You know, if you have a proper diet and you have all the energy you need, the body will make what it needs generally. But with the nine essential amino acids, you ready? We're gonna list them. Leucine, isoleucine, valine, histidine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, threonine, and tryptophan. Your body cannot make those. And so you need to make sure that your diet brings in those amino acids. Now you can do this normally by you know, eating protein that is dense in these amino acids, such as uh, animal meats and whey protein, but there's also plant sources that have different combinations of these amino acids, whether it be soy or hemp or pea protein or quinoa, like there are lots of great sources for all these essential amino acids. But when we're talking about these products as uh, supplements, then we're kind of going into a good, better, best situation. And if you've watched Brain Gains with any regularity in the past, uh, uh, we have talked about this before. So we kind of look at branched chain amino acids as good, right? With, with, with a branched chain amino acid, acid supplement, you are getting the leucine that you need to get as a part of a normal diet. And that leucine is super important for that mammalian target of rapamycin system that we talked about earlier. And that is great, right? That's good. However, if you are just consuming the branched chain amino acids, you are only getting a third of the essential amino acids that your body cannot make by itself. And there are times when, when a person's diet may still have decrements in one of those nine uh, essential aminos, maybe two, maybe three. But if you have a supplement that contains all nine of the essential amino acids, you know that you are filling in every possible gap in amino acids that, that your body might have. And so essential amino acids are better, right? Because you are still getting leucine, you're getting the branched chain amino acids because they are a part of the essential amino acid umbrella. However, it is better because you are also getting the six other essential amino acids, histidine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, threonine, and tryptophan as a part of that supplement. So if you feel like there are gaps in your nutrition and you feel like you may need the essential amino acids and are looking for a better solution than just branching amino acids, essential amino acids might be right for you. Now there is a best situation and the best situation means that you are getting full on whole protein with all of the essential amino acids and all the non-essential amino acids in proper amounts throughout the course of every day and your full protein macros are met and exceeded and that is best. You know, we always like to say full protein and full foods are best. Protein has a really high thermic effect, which means that it costs a lot of calories in order to break protein down, which means that it's pretty good for you to consume protein and high protein diets are really the cornerstone of muscle growth and, 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 and fitness in general. So anyway, that's essential amino acids. And if you guys have more questions about that or branch chains, keep them coming. We got plenty to do. Uh, can we totally depend on a natural diet? EE Gaming asks, can we totally depend on a natural diet? I think the question is, can this be achieved without supplements? And the answer is yes. And I've, I've followed this answer throughout my entire time on Brain Gains. If you didn't want supplements, if you want to avoid them and you just want to focus on your nutrition and make sure that all of your amino acid needs are met through whole foods, you are absolutely capable of doing so. And, and humans have done so for many thousands of years. The problem is, is that getting your full protein throughout the day, getting every amino acid and getting every micronutrient and getting everything that you need to perform at your absolute peak can be expensive. It can be tough and it can be time consuming. And so we recommend supplements as a way to supplement your diet so that it can be easier for you to achieve those goals while still 
you know, not breaking the bank or still having time to, to spend outside of the gym or outside of the kitchen, for example. So can you? Yes, but it may be easier to take a supplement that fills in those gaps for you. Uh, foods that are high in BCAAs, uh, animal meat and, and animal protein in general is really high in leucine and BCAAs. Uh, leucine is actually pretty difficult to find in plant protein. Uh, so that's why we usually look towards uh, BCAA products for people who are vegan, especially. Uh, but animal meats uh, and animal proteins like whey protein, milk protein, egg protein, they all have plenty of leucine in them as well. What does carnitine do? Carnitine is not one of the 20 structural amino acids. Carnitine is a protein in and of itself. Carnitine sits on the inner membrane of the mitochondria. And what did we all learn about mitochondria in middle school? That's right. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. The problem with mitochondria is that they are locked down pretty tight and have a difficult time letting things in and out. And one of the things that they need to bring in to the mitochondria is fats. Your body loves using fat as energy, especially when you are exercising for long periods of time or when your sugar or, or AT, or sorry, your glycogen stores run out. So fat is a great source of energy. It's a very high density energy source in that it has eight calories per gram instead of four calories from sugar or protein. The problem is, is that fat molecules in general are big and they are really slow to bring into the mitochondria and they don't do so by themselves. So carnitine, it's, it is the protein's job to shuttle fat cell, or sorry, fat molecules from the outside of the mitochondria to the inside of the mitochondria so that they can be broken down in their subsequent pieces so that they can be used for energy. Do BCAAs have a negative effect on a person being treated for high blood pressure? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna preface this with the fact that I am not a doctor and I do not fully understand all the mechanisms behind all of the blood pressure medications that exist and all of the mechanisms that go into someone who has uh, um, like high blood pressure as a condition, right? So I'm, I'm gonna preface with that. However, branched chain amino acids are just that, they are amino acids. And every bit of protein that you have ever consumed is made of the same thing. And so according to your body, according to your bloodstream and your kidneys, consuming amino acids should not be any different than consuming any other protein source because all they see is the end result of amino acids. So I don't believe there should be anything there. However, if you have high blood pressure, if you are on any sort of medication, please, oh please, talk to your doctor before you start consuming any supplement because there are mechanisms there that I don't fully understand since I am not a uh, educated medical doctor. So take that as you will. What is the proper time to have protein except post-workout? And is it right to have protein post seven o'clock PM? So protein timing is, is a huge topic of discussion over the last ooh, five, seven years especially. And the general consensus right now, according to the uh, International Society for Sport and Nutrition, is that total protein intake is significantly more important than the timing of that protein specifically. So if your protein goal for the day uh, let's say let's say you weigh 150 pounds and we're just going to keep it easy so your protein intake goal for the day is 150 grams of protein your goal is to get that 150 grams of protein and that is more important than what part of the day you are consuming that 150 grams now i wouldn't recommend having 150 grams of protein in the morning that probably wouldn't taste very good and it'd be kind of weird to eat all that at once so i'd probably spread it out but getting that total goal in is significantly more important than the when and the where. However, uh, there is data that shows that your body can use protein very effectively immediately post-workout, which is good. There is also data that shows that uh, casein consumption before you go to bed can keep, your, can keep your blood amino acid levels higher over the course of the night, which is good. That may help with uh, sparing uh, muscle protein that may be lost and broken down to keep energy levels high. So if you have amino acids circulating in your blood, you may be sparing amino acids that may have been pulled from muscle tissue later. So that's good. But overall, your goal is consumption of your goal protein number, right? Get, get that protein in and then worry about timing from there. Uh, whey or ISO? So this, uh, this is an interesting question from Facebook and we're actually gonna talk about like 
protein as a category a little bit more next week. So be here next Thursday at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. But we'll touch on this for just a moment. So isolate is whey protein. It's the same protein, except that the sugar and the fat have been removed as much as they possibly can without making it taste like crap. So it's not an either an or situation. You're consuming the same thing. There's just a 20 to 30 calorie difference in the two shakes because the isolate has had some of the sugar and fat removed. Generally speaking, over the course of the day, you're probably not going to worry too much about the extra 20 or 30 calories. I'm much more interested in if you are going to continuously consume that protein uh, at the right time in the right amounts. And if the flavor makes a difference there, which I absolutely think it does, then maybe stick with the whey protein. And if you are on like a super tight cutting diet and you are very strict with your calories and you need that extra 20 or 30 calories every day, then go with the ISO and choke it down. I'm not saying they all taste bad because they don't. There are actually some really good isolates out there, but the general consensus is that it's difficult to make a whey isolate taste better than a concentrate because humans love fat and sugar. They just do. And they, those have been removed from the concentrate to make for an isolate. Uh, is there a certification a PT can take in order to be more familiar with supplements? Yeah, actually, if you look right here, the CISSN is a certification from the International Society of Sport Nutrition. Uh, you may check that out. Uh, their website has all the information that you need, but it means you're a certified sport nutritionist. It requires some education in the field, and then it requires the test, and you can go through there. And it's, it's run by some really upstanding people who have done some amazing research and they have a conference every year that we all go to and it's it's just really great for information on this kind of stuff i highly recommend it uh, how do you catch spiking in whey protein uh, this is a question from youtube for those who don't know spiking of protein means that if you have a, a protein shake and it has 20 grams of protein in the scoop there is a tactic that exists and not so much anymore actually i actually haven't seen it in a long time uh, it used to exist in the industry where they would they would add 20 grams of whey protein and then add like five grams of something like glutamine or uh, uh, alanine or something like that and then say that you were getting 25 grams of protein when you weren't you were getting 20 grams of protein you were getting five grams of a single amino acid uh, generally speaking they have to be very clear about that uh, and they have to list the amino acid as its own ingredient in the other ingredients section. So you can usually see that underneath the facts panel. Uh, however, I will tell you that any reputable brand does not do that anymore. So you should be good there. All right, so before uh, I let you go, I did want to segue the talk of amino acids into one more topic. So we, it's obviously getting really hot outside. People are spending a lot of time outside. Uh, and I want to make sure that everyone is making sure that they are confirming that their hydration status is as good as it can be. So one of the great things about amino acids and amino acid products in general is that they taste great. We talked about it a little bit earlier, but they can come in virtually any flavor. And what I like to do is I'll take a little bit of amino acids and I'll scoop them into a big thing of water. Because I don't know about you, I have a really difficult time consuming a gallon or a half gallon of water in a day. It's just, it's just a lot of water. And it doesn't have any flavor in it, right? It's just, it's just water. So it gets kind of boring. But if your water tastes like cherry limeade, or if your water tastes like lemon lime, or if your water tastes like blue raz, or whatever, it's a lot easier to consume that water. Even if, you, even if you're not scooping a bunch of supplements into it, just having a little bit of flavor in there tastes great. And so one of the benefits that I like for amino acids is that they're really great for uh, encouraging high levels of water consumption. Now, why is that important? From a fitness standpoint, it has been found and, and proven relatively definitively that even being 2% uh, uh, of your body weight uh, under in water, and that was a really confusing way to say that, if you have lost 2% of your body weight in water over the course of a workout, you will see decrements in performance. So if you weigh 100 pounds, first of all, you're fairly light, but this just makes it easy for math. If you weigh 100 pounds and you lose two pounds of water, you will see significant decreases in your ability to work out. So if you are 200 pounds at the beginning of your workout and 196 pounds at the end of your workout, you will see significant decreases in your ability to work out. Uh, I know that seems like a lot of water, but for those of you that exercise outside, for those of you that do long distance running or long distance biking, for those of you that are exercising, uh, doing football practice out in the summer in the middle and you're sweating profusely, it's, it's way easier to lose that much water than you might think, especially if you're doing it over the course of many days in a row. 
because there's no guarantee that you're going to get all that water back after each day. So the best thing that you can do is make sure that you are weighing yourself consistently so that you can track how much water that uh, water you've lost and how much water you gain at the end of the day. Uh, another thing that water is very good for, not just performance decrements, but it's obviously very important for controlling your body temperature. Uh, as, as icky as it can get sometimes, sweating is so important for maintaining your body temperature. And when temperatures start rising, as we are already seeing here in the middle of June, my God, it's the middle of June. Uh, when, 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 when the summer heat starts rising, we're going to start seeing people have struggles with heat right? We see heat stroke. We see, we see people that uh, are really starting to struggle because they're unable to get the water that they need. And we see this a lot with football practice. We see this a lot with distance running. Uh, and this is a function of a couple of things. Number one, total water consumption, which we just talked about, making sure you're tracking the amount of water that you're consuming over the course of not just one day, but over the course of your entire workout plan, making sure that you're weighing yourself constantly so you know how much water you've gained and lost. Number two, and this is I don't know, more important, it's is super important, is your electrolyte balance. And I'm sure you are all acutely aware of the fact that sweat is made of more than just water. Sweat is made of water and is also made of a ton of electrolytes and minerals. So uh, calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, sodium, like these are all in there and these are all important to your body's function. Interestingly, when you are losing a lot of water, you are losing a lot of minerals, but one mineral that you are not losing at a greater rate than your water is potassium. So one, uh, one uh, bad outcome of dehydration that I have seen multiple times in people who are doing uh, very high level events is something called hyperkalemia. And this means that you have, you have lost so much water that the concentration of potassium in your body has increased to a degree that makes it so it's difficult for your muscles to function. For those who don't know, your muscles contract uh, and, and, and nerve impulses are moved by the movement of sodium and potassium in and out of your nerve cells. And so if the concentration gradient due to water being lost gets changed, those impulses can't function the way they're supposed to. And so we see things like weakness, nausea, and even irregular pulses in people's heartbeats. So please be careful if, if, if amino acids are the way that you are going to stay on top of your hydration, I urge you to uh, follow through with that. Uh, it's super important and it's super hot. So please be on top of that guys. I can't stress it enough. We actually went to YouTube and we posted a question. If you guys don't follow the YouTube channel, if you're not subscribed, make sure you do because we post community questions and we want to hear feedback about what people think about certain topics. And generally a day or two before we do brain gains, we'll post a question that has to do with the topic that we're talking about this week. So we taught, we posted a question. What do you like to drink to stay hydrated? I know it's super boring, but I always like to see what people drink in order to stay hydrated. We got lots of answers for water. Uh, some people actually drink coffee, which is interesting. I think they're just looking for that caffeine without any extra calories, which makes sense, unless you're dumping a bunch of cream and sugar into it. Uh, I saw one that was coffee mixed with protein, which is kind of interesting. Don't worry, there's nothing negative about uh, the mixing of those two. I've just never seen it before. And then we got one answer that I actually really liked, uh, the blood of my enemies. So there you go. Nothing bad can come of that you actually gain their strength if you drink the blood of your enemies. Who'd have thought? There you go. Thank you, uh, YouTube. Uh, okay, so we're actually pushing out of time and there are just a butt ton of messages. So big thanks to my mods for uh, taking care of that. Guys, if you didn't get a chance to get your question answered today, uh, we answered a ton of them earlier and I apologize if we couldn't get to them. But if, you, if I didn't get your question today, please send me an email right here, brain.gains at bodybuilding.com. That email is on my desktop all day. So make sure you send it to me and I will get to you as soon as I can. And I can answer tons of questions about amino acids and hydration and anything in between brain.gains at bodybuilding.com. That's gains with a Z brain.gains at bodybuilding.com. And I will answer those for you. I promise. Uh, but before we go, we have a couple of products that kind of fit into this category, uh, that I figured you guys should know about. Uh, there is no amino spiking in these, which is cool, but that's just a reference to a question earlier. Of course, there's no amino spiking. These are amino acid products. Anyway, uh, so rising labs barricade is available at bodybuilding.com. This is actually a newer brand, uh, and they are just bursting out of the gates. So if you want to give them a try, make sure you check that out. All nine amino acids, as well as electrolytes there. And it comes in cucumber, melon, lime, and skyberry. I'm not sure what skyberry is, but I'm intrigued. Skyberry sounds cool. Number two, 
Uh, we have the caged hydrocharge, which is coconut water power, powder, taurine, and then the spectra antioxidant blend is a really interesting formulation that comes in apple, limeade, uh, and other flavors. So make sure you check out hydrocharge. That's from our man, Chris Gethin and the cage line, very high quality supplements there. Our friends at EVL have the ever true BCAA energy. Uh, we have tons of flavors of this product. So if you like flavors and you like uh, having your BCAAs with a little bit of carnosine and beta alanine and with a little bit of caffeine, there's actually about a coffee cup's worth of caffeine per scoop or per serving in this. Uh, so if you like this as kind of like your morning pickup instead of coffee, it's not a bad idea. Like I said, comes in tons of flavors. Uh, I'm not a big coffee drinker myself, so this is actually a really nice way to give me that morning boost without the uh, hot coffee. So make sure you check it out. Uh, Straub, or sorry, Pink Star Blast is the is my favorite. It tastes like the Starburst. It's really good. Uh, all right, uh, another new one on site is the M Fit Menace. So this is BCAAs with coconut water powder and caffeine, kind of a blend of a few other products that we've talked about today. Right now, it's only in one flavor. That's the peach mango, but it's really good. So make sure you check it out. Uh, let's see, we have a couple more. We have the bodybuilding.com. Hey, I know those guys. Uh, this is just a, a standard BCAA product. We wanted to make something simple, something delicious, and it comes in blueberry lemonade. Sorry, blueberry? Yep, blueberry lemonade. I knew that because I have it downstairs in my cabinet. It also comes in white peach. That's one of our new flavors, and it is also delicious, but if you're just looking for a branched chain amino acid supplement, like we mentioned before, maybe your leucine levels are low. Maybe you're on a vegan diet and you need more leucine because you're not getting it as part of your protein intake. I don't know, but this is a really great way to get that. And then finally, the last one that I got for you today is EVL Hydramino. So thank you, EVL, for giving us two products to talk about today. Uh, this one's cool for a couple of reasons. Number one, a single product contains 60 servings instead of 30. So it's a lot of bang for your buck there. But it also has tons of electrolytes. It's got a greens blend in it. It's got an antioxidant blend in it. It's got coconut powder in it. So if you feel like you're sweating a ton and you just want to rehydrate, this is going to be a great way to do it. It's going to make your water taste great. Uh, there are no amino acids in this one. This is not an amino acid. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, there are. No. Back up. It's an amino product. But it is focused on the electrolytes. It is focused on the antioxidants and the greens. Check it out. It comes in blue ras. It also comes in orange. But I think that flavor may be on back order right now. So blue ras. Make sure you check it out. It's a great deal. Uh, anyway, that's all I got for you on products. Uh, sales. That cage hydrocharge is 20% off selected flavors. We have 30% off the signature B, uh, BCAA, 25% off the extend sports on, ex on selected SKUs. And that hydro amino that I just showed you is actually buy one, get one right now. So it's a ton of bang for your buck. Cool. Finally, you know how we finish every episode talking about one of our body fit plans. Today we are talking about the Hannah Eden Fire 2.0. So I don't know if you guys have ever tried the Fire FYR Find Your Reason program from Hannah Eden. It's a butt kicker. I did it myself and it's a absolute butt kicker. We decided that, you know what? We're really gonna go balls in on this one. We're gonna make a 2.0 version. It's gonna be bigger, louder, stronger, better. So here's what we gotta say. Whatever your fitness goals, you need a reason driving you to reach it and a guide to help you get there. Hannah Eden set the fitness world on fire when she created the original Fire, Hannah Eden's 30 day fitness program for BBCom Body Fit Elite and the momentum of her follow-up program, Fire 2.0 also just won't quit. Fitness is not a one-time event, and given how many users told us they did the original Fire multiple times, you get that. Fire 2.0 is your chance to find your reason all over again. So Fire 2.0 is everything that you loved about the first one, cranked up to 11. Uh, it's actually longer, and it is harder, and it is better, and it is louder. So make sure you go check it out. It's just 30 to 40 minutes a day, and you can follow along every one of the workouts because they're doing it right alongside you. Minimal equipment, something you can do at home uh, if you're ready to sweat. So make sure you check it out. Anyway, like I mentioned, next week, we're going to be back on Thursday, 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. I believe the focus is muscle building. So we talked about amino acids today, but we're going to talk about more about protein building muscle next week. So make sure you check us out Thursday, 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. We'll make sure to remind you via socials. Until then, my name is Tyler, and we'll see you next week. Until then, keep on lifting. Have a go. You are capable of so much more than you're aware of. Let me show you how much of a badass you really are. In FYR 2.0, the overall goal is to shed fat as well as building lean muscle. We want that heart pumping, strength, explosiveness. We have five workouts a week. Each of these will last for 30 minutes. Oh, I love that feeling! My whole body is shot. Real time, follow along workouts, but we'll kick ass together. Let's go, you at home. We're in it. Believe in yourself. I believe in you. Let's go. No matter where you're at, we've got something for you. We've got beginner, intermediate, and advanced. All in the same room. I don't care what weight you use, this is nasty. 
Yes, it is. Minimal equipment. Anytime, anywhere. Fire 2.0 will light the fire underneath you that you've always needed in order to make a change. Bring the heat. You know we're here to play. Unleash that potential. Let's see what you're made of with Fire 2.0.